The pontificate of Gregory XIII was also an important landmark in the process of extending the apostolic palace. Two important halls were redecorated, the Sala Vecchia degli Svizzeri and the Sala dei Chiaroscuri. The first was originally the antechamber to the apartment of Julius II. The other was used for private consistories and councils and was redecorated by Giuseppe Cesare with solemn and majestic figures of apostles and saints. On the second floor of the palace, the Pope had another four halls built in which to entertain important guests. They were called Focconi because of the large braziers used to heat them. The first hall is notable for the rich and articulated fresco that adorns it. The lunettes are decorated with scenes from the life of St. Gregory the Great, painted in honor of the Pope's patron saint. The second hall is more elaborately decorated with frescoes illustrating episodes in the life of the Pope himself. In the smaller of the two halls, painted by Ottaviano Mascarino and his pupils in 1578, there's a splendid gilded and inlaid wood ceiling divided into panels which illustrate scenes from the Book of the Apocalypse. The second Focconi Hall leads into the Mater Redentoris Chapel, previously called the Matilde Chapel, after a famous countess who supported the papacy against the emperor in the 11th century and donated all her property to the church. The cultural interests of Pope Gregory XIII were so vast they extended beyond the field of art into that of science, geography and astronomy in particular. These interests of the Pope are clearly reflected in the decor of the so-called Sala Bologna. In homage to the city of the Pope's birth, Lorenzo Sabatini painted the map of Bologna over an entire wall. Sixus V elected in 1585 after the death of Gregory XIII, radically changed the urbanistic layout of Rome during the five years of his pontificate. He completed the Dome of St. Peter's and commissioned the architect Domenico Fontana to design and build a third wing onto the loggia of Bramante and Raphael. Completed in 1590, the year of the Pope's death, this palace still houses the papal apartments. The successors of Sixtus V were left to finish off and decorate the 85 rooms in the new palace. The Clementine Hall takes its name from Pope Clement VIII, who dedicated it to the saint and martyr Pope Clement I. The baptism of the saint, his martyrdom and apotheosis, painted on the ceiling of the hall in a marvelous perspective design, are the work of Alberti, Baldassare Croce, and Paolo Brill. The same artists were responsible for the decoration of the consistory hall, 
with its interesting gilded and inlaid wood ceiling, complete with the coat of arms of Clement VIII. A frieze along the walls depicts the most important Italian monasteries. The College of Cardinals, under the presidency of the Pope, meets here occasionally to discuss important issues relating to the faith and to the government of the church. The Clementine Hall gives on to ten smaller halls which lead into the Papal Library. This is where the pontiff receives heads of state and the world's most important religious leaders in private audience. The home of the popes and the seat of government of the church rise majestically above St. Peter's Square. The history of the church is indelibly carved upon these walls, so rich in beauty, culture, and faith. The splendor of their treasures is a sign of the veneration shown Christ and his vicar, who resides in this place, made holy by the presence of the tomb of Peter and by the faith of Christians down the ages.